Shut up, I'm doing a video here. Welcome back to Psychonauts, everyone. Having finally cleared every other level in the game, it's time to return to Meat Circus. Okay... The circus I remember from my childhood was definitely not made of meat. The last time I checked. No! No! Little Bunny, don't go in there! That's a bad place! That's a bad place for Bunny! I don't know why it showed that cutscene again, since I've already seen it. And the whole of Meat Circus is just one area for purposes of figment collection. What is that? Anyway, there's a figment that I missed. And I heard crying earlier, but I'm pretty sure I got all the baggage in this area. So there's really only one thing that I still need to do outside, and that's trade in my collectibles. The fortune teller turns my cobwebs into cards, my cards into ranks, without needing any cores, in case you forgot to buy any. And she would also trade in brains for health if I had any left, but I don't. So let's just head inside the tent. You gotta help me save the bunny! If he just holds still, I could catch him and hide him from my dad! He runs a butcher shop. He wants to make food out of them. Oh, that's right. Maury's old man was a butcher. It looks like your childhood memories of the circus got all mixed up with his childhood memories of his dad's butcher shop. My memories were bad enough. This is just gross. Uh-oh. You'd better keep that kid out of trouble. With your brains all scrambled like this, what happens to him happens to you. Ah! Help! So yeah, that meat falls into those blender things and spits out giant mutated rabbits, which will attack Mori and potentially kill him. And if he dies, we die. Or rather, we lose a lot of astral projection. And as he says, we need to hold the little bunny still so that little Oli can grab it and save it. Otherwise, he's just going to keep fruitlessly running after it forever. Until the mutant rabbits kill him. Or I do. I don't think anything I do can actually hurt him, but I might be able to punch him. I got you, Mr. Bunny! I don't plan to try. So of course, once he grabs the bunny, he just flies it to another ledge higher up in the level and immediately starts getting attacked by mutant rabbits. Help! So the level is on a kind of interesting timer. We have to get up there, which isn't very difficult to do, as you can see, before he runs out of health. Help! But I want that figment behind the fat lady. I really don't want to have to replay this level, although it's a heck of a lot easier once we're not trying to protect him at the same time. And I could just go over there and grab the rabbit, but I want to grab all the convenient figments while I'm here because he's got plenty of health left. Rather than waiting until he gets up to the next ledge and chasing after him then. This takes forever. And we just have to keep doing this over and over again. The thing that most people hate about this area, and I can kind of see their point of view, is that if you die here, you have to start at the very beginning. There are no checkpoints in this entire area. It does have the advantage of not making you recollect the figments, but again, you can very easily just skip the figments, save little Oli, 
and then come back and get the figments in a second pass. At the very least, if you fall down too far, you usually land on a safety net that bounces you back up to about where you were. Then we got to deal with the other really annoying thing about this level. The knife throwers. As you can see, there's no way to get up except to get him to throw his knife into the rotating target and grapple on it. And now I've broken the music. I have no idea what just happened. Something, I think, about the sound of my ricocheting side blast. And this is really going to grate on me. Well, I never knew until just then that telekinesis was so effective on the mutant rabbits. And the music's just gonna keep going like this, I guess. Okay. Well, only slightly less annoying than it was before. So it's possible to grab all the figments without losing too much time here. And now we'll show you the easy way to deal with the knife throwers. If you put on your shield, it bounces the knives right into the target. Rather than having to jump up and divert their aim. It's actually a trickier jump than it looks to the next ledge, but I managed to make it, and we're only about halfway to where little Oli is. Now we gotta get on these tight ropes, which are hard to see and hard to land on. I'm playing with the camera here mostly just so I can hopefully see what I'm doing a little bit. And he's barely hanging in there. I couldn't tell whether my shots damaged him or not, but hopefully he can get to the bunny before the bunnies get to him. And that is at least the end of the timed portion of the level. There are no mutant rabbits trying to get him at the exit. And I can quite leisurely finish collecting all the figments here. And there is a way to take out the knife guys. But only temporarily. He'll be back up and throwing knives before you know it. Not much point to doing that, especially during the segments of the level where you actually need their knives to advance. So I'm just going to get out of here. We did it! We saved all the bunnies! <laughs> now it's time for the main event! Come on! And that wasn't the main event? Well... Oh. At least the music stops when I open a vault, so hopefully this will fix it. It's still going. And I still can't tell how many figments I may have missed. Alright, anyway, as you can see from the vault, even before he was rejected from the armed forces for being too short, he was traumatized by watching his father slaughter rabbits for the butcher shop when he was a kid. And... I don't know whether that contributed to his fear of tall people or not, but 
it might have. Don't think I've got the tag for that bag yet. And here's the final cobweb. In the entire game. And where is the tag? Do I already have it? Eh, guess there's one easy way to find out. Yeah, guess I did. And the knife throwers at this point are just an annoyance because the health I lose comes back almost immediately. So it's time for the main event, as Oli said. A giant grind rail segment. With a bunch of figments, most of which are pretty easy to get. One of them is more or less impossible to get without losing a life along the way. It's coming up right around this curve here, I think. There it is. It looks like it's above the rail until you get close, but you have to jump off to get it. Huh. Well, it looks like you can get back onto the rail. And then I miss one of the easy ones. Oh well, I'm pretty sure I'll have to make at least two trips anyway. Here's the tricky part. A whole bunch of jumps right in a row. And you can't double jump on a grind rail. Oh good, music's finally back. That was one of the most awful experiences I have ever had in this game. And I've been through this level many, many times. We haven't even been to the part everybody hates. I mean, everybody hates the part that I went through before this one. But that's not the part everybody hates. Jump a little earlier, grab that figment, and barely make it onto the grind rail. And now the tricky series of jumps. Really just gotta wait until the last minute to make each one. Until you get to these. Because if you land right at the end of that segment, you don't have a lot of time to get to the next one. If you're going fast enough, you can just clear two segments at once. But I think it's a better idea to slow down a little bit and just make sure you've got time to jump. And that's the last of the figments. So that's one of the last three ranks we couldn't get before this level. Here's the second one. And for the third, I've got one more cobweb in my inventory that I need to go back to take care of. In an invisible bubble, apparently. And actually, while I'm at it, let's see how the fortune teller sees me. Ah, as a kid with a balloon made out of brains. I have not, in fact, achieved the highest possible rank. There is, as I said, one more rank available from the punching minigame, but this is the rank you get if you just collect everything in the game. And my reward is an extra cutscene, which I believe plays at the end of the end credits anyway, so I'm not going to go out of my way to watch it just yet. We'll see it at the end of the next video. But I think we've done good work here. We've collected everything, achieved rank 100, and next time we'll go into the tent and face the butcher. But there is one more thing that you need to see before we go do that. If you head back to the Collective Unconscious, which there's no reason to do at this point, you get a little extra bonus message floating around in the ether once you've cleared every level. I don't know if you have to clear the real world too, or just all the mental worlds, but congratulations, Psychomaster. We did it. See you next time.